Hey guys, Deepity here, and today we have a very special Miku statue. It is the Miku Expo Digital Stars 2020 version. It's a 1 7th scale, so it's uh, fairly large. As you can see here, it's almost as tall as my head. I think probably taller than my head. Kind of hard to see with the glare and the plastic wrap around it, but this is what we got. For those wondering, where can I get this? Well, you can actually get it at multiple places. Big Bad Toy Store, or you can go to crunchyroll.com. Just type in uh, Vocaloid Hatsune Miku uh, Expo Digital Stars 2020 version or any combination of those words and you should be able to find this. This goes for around 250-ish bucks before shipping and all that stuff, but you can probably find it for a little cheaper or a little more depending if this sells out or not. Okay, so let's go check out the box. Obviously, as you can see here, there's this huge open window so you can see the figure. It looks pretty nice, but yeah, obviously it's warped and stuff because of the uh, plastic encasing. Over here, you see the Digital Stars logo right here. You see Hatsune Miku. Then you got the Hatsune Miku logo. On the back, you have the illustration this is based off of. She looks very sporty. I, I do like her like top. I know she has headphones on and stuff, so yeah. And then on the top, you got the star for the Digital Star thing. On the bottom, a bunch of legal stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and open this up and put it together if we need to combine any pieces and let's uh, go on and move on with this unboxing. Okay, cool. Oh, all right. This thing, this thing's, uh, this thing's pretty big. In the inside of the box it says Digital Stars, uh, but we don't care about the box, so let's uh, toss that on the floor there. So everything is encased right here. So let's cut more of this tape off the protective casing. You know, I say this in all my unboxing videos, but you want to unbox these things this way, right? You don't want to open it this way, you want to open it this way. Just up and down. If you open it side to sides, the, the statue or the figurine could fall, it could break, it could shatter. You do not want that. I do not want that happening to you. So yes, please remember, open your stuff this way. All right, so, oh wow, I'm really liking this. A bunch of very, very fragile pieces. I'll get to show you in a second. But there's a bunch of ribbons and little doohickeys that kind of just like fall out of her hair. So this is a fairly fragile piece. Let me tell you why once I remove all these plastic bits. So all of her hair, see these tassels and her hair is covered by plastic. So, you know, if you end up getting a statue like this or this specific statue, be careful not to yank this plastic off because you could snap all these tassels, all this little hair pieces. You could break that and uh, you don't want that, you know? One of the highlights about any Miku figurine or statue is the hair. The hair, they usually exaggerate it to like all these crazy waves and all these little things and you know that that only looks possible in animation or in arts but having a solid 3d art piece like this is something to behold and you don't want to ruin that right so please be careful when you move, remove all these uh, pieces here you don't want to mess this up oh yeah this is tight this statue looks really good all right so here we go this is the statue look at that beaut oh my goodness but of course you know, you don't want to look at it. You don't want to look at this from far away. You want to look at it up close. So let me zoom in and show you guys all the details. All right, guys, look at her face. Look at that, dude. You know, she has some really, really, really bright, bold eyes. I, I love the spectrum of colors. You know, you have a nice turquoise that matches her hair here. You have some yellow underneath. And then you got the really bold lines that outline her eyes. Of course, you know, Miku has that blush, those anime blush lines. I do love her, her her mouth. Her mouth is sculpted in, it's not just painted. So that's a really, really cool effect here. You know, it has some dimension in it. It's just, it's not a sticker. It's not just painted on, not printed. There is a sculpt on her tongue and her mouth. So that's pretty good. And you can also see her nose, you know, her cute little budded nose. It protrudes right there in the middle of her face. So that's a really cool detail. Underneath the bangs in her hair, you can see the eyebrows painted on, you know, and you can see her eyelids underneath. They did a really good job putting uh, the hair together on top without trying to cover too much because you could see all the details on her face, you know, from her eyebrows to all of her eyes, the blush underneath her hair. And, you know, speaking of hair, let's talk about the, the bangs here, you know, very, very detailed. So you can see on the tips right, right there of her hair, you can see the paint is a little, there's a slight gradient right here. You know, it's a little darker on the points and then it gets lighter as it goes on top. You know, it's, they added some depth to her hair. You can see it in the paint or in the print job, right? That there's a little shimmer on there. So they did add a lot of dimension and a lot of lighting to her hair, not only to the rest of the piece itself, but they have a lot of things going on with their hair, a lot of paints just to add 
some depth and lighting, some realism to her 3D-ness, you know? And then what's really cool detail, the little clips or I don't know, the uh, I guess the, the hair ties around her hair. You can see here, it says Miku Expo. It's on both pigtails. It says Miku Expo on all four sides. That's a pretty dope detail. So you have her headphones. I don't see any logos or anything on any of the, the phones here, but they look like DJ headsets. You know, it's big, it covered the side of her face. You can see, even see the details back here. The headpiece, it continues on from the back of her neck. And then, yeah, let's, let's talk about her jacket, right? So she has this really big black hoodie over here on the back, and I'm gonna have to zoom out a bit because the jacket is a really, really cool piece to, to talk about. So right here, the jacket flows out. You know, it's very, very uh, baggy, while at the same time, it's not like hindering her figure. You know, Miko is known to have a very slender, athletic figure. And you know, with the fact that this jacket is like exuding some action, right? It's the fact that it's like flaring out gives her like almost kind of like a twirl effect, right? Even though that, you know, the, the jacket is is still as, 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 as is the skirt, the fact that it's flowing out there, it's flaring out, almost like, like she like spun around in a circle or like she's jumping up and she's lining back down, right? So it's a really cool effect here. And I love that about her jacket, right? The details there, you can see all the little wrinkles on the jacket from the ruffles on the band right here to the pockets. And they even have like the little button on the pocket, which has adds a really nice touch, a nice glossy paint finish to the button just so it can have some dimension while the rest of the jacket is a matte finish. It gives it some realism to it, right? Then kind of see it right there as well. The button also a shiny finish. It's the same thing you can say about her skirt. So her skirt, you can see very subtle wrinkles on her part of the skirt that goes around the waist. Has some folds. And once again, add some realism as if this was a real piece of cloth. You no, know, even though it's a solid plastic PVC piece and it continues all the ruffles on the bottom of the skirts and it goes all around, right? From the back all the way around. And what's cool, if you could see here, yes, you can see a nice shot of her butt, but let's talk about the jacket. Even the inside of the jacket, right? They go into links to just add these details underneath. Even though we're gonna be, you know, you, you display this piece, this piece is gonna be standing like this, right? It's gonna be just standing like this. You're gonna be looking at the front piece. No one's gonna be looking at the bottom piece, but look, they went out of the way to add all these little details, right? And what's crazy about the underneath the jacket is that all the pieces, it's not just some like pattern, just like any jacket, any real cloth piece, they didn't just like repeat and rinse a certain pa wrinkle pattern on the mold. They individually made every single wrinkle unique just like a real jacket, right? And you can say the same thing about the skirt here. Same thing, all the little ruffles are all unique and none of them are identical. And what I love about some of these high-end anime figures, right, is that like, you could see right here, you know, it's it just it's not just the front, right? It's also little parts like right, way back here, right? Let's, let's zoom in. So even when we're looking at parts like the back, this part right here, you can see under her neck, the back of her tank top, the, the wrinkle on her armpit over here, like it continues on like everywhere. You see that back muscle, right? Right here, this, it adds so much dimension to her. It's, it's really great. And then let's talk about her top, right? So her top, I, you, this is a lot more obvious since the top is uh, more white, right? You can see the added paint job. So I'm touching the top right here, right? And even though I'm touching the top, there is a slight wrinkle right here into the mold, but there's added shadow to give it more depth, right? So the paint job is added around her top or sports bra or whatever it is, it adds, it adds more depth to it. And it also gives it like a more of like a cartoony feel. As you can see here, it says digital stars, you know, um, all around the red band around her waist. You can see there's some tonage in her stomach. You know, it's not just a flat uh, skin piece. It's not just one color. You can see a subtle like shadowing of her skin tone right here to add some muscle definition. So that's pretty cool. And then her legs, you know, Miku's known to have like super skinny legs. Uh, right here, so there's not much extra paint or any shadowing on her legs, but you could see the kneecaps So her shoes are pretty cool. They look like they're like kind of inspired by the Nike uh, Warachis. It's this shoe right here you know, you can totally see the resemblance, right, of like where this is probably inspired from. I'm not sure if this is exactly inspired from it, but it kind of looks like it, you know? So you can see right here, it's red uh, all around that's covering most of her foot. And then on the toe box, you have this weird design. Oh, no, 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 look, look, it kind of comes out and you can kind of see her toes, actually. This is actually, wow, look at, look at that detail. So these shoes are actually a complete different piece. You can see her toes. I was about to say, like, what is this, like, see-through? 
thing, or it's like that's the design, these lines, but that's her toes inside of it. And the same thing goes for her uh, right foot here. You can see her toes. So these are kind of like sneaker sandals. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, they're like sandals. You can see her, <laughs> you can see her foot, and like you can see her foot right here. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't even know that. Look, that's some crazy detail. You could actually see the nail polish on her toenails in there. You know, I was talking about how these were more like sandals or kind of open. Yeah, look at those toenails. You could see the toenails and the nail polish under there. Like, that's, that's, they didn't have to do that, but they did. That's some crazy details, right? Something that no one would ever look at except you or me or you have some foot fetish. Like, this is not something normal. You could actually see nail polish on the toes that is covered by the, the, the shoe. Anyways, yeah, you can see that it's tied by a shoelace and you can see the tongue over here. They even got some details at the very bottom of the feet. This hole is uh, so you could stick this thing on top of the base. We'll get to that later. Let's keep talking about her jacket. Look, oh, and here's another detail. There's an M right here from Miku. That's, I mean, that's what I'm assuming it is. And you can see all the individual teeth on the zipper. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. And what's also great about the statue, which I kind of touched upon earlier, is that like you can actually see right here uh, the jacket actually, there's, there's there's a hole in the jacket. Now, you know, it does end right there. They didn't have it hollow completely, which would have been crazy, but the fact that the jacket already goes in all the way up to her like elbow is already pretty impressive. Um, I also noticed the hands, right? Each individual finger has nail polish. That's a really nice detail. Um, it has it on the finger as well. It's red. And on the other hand over here, her left hand also has nail polish. Nice little subtle detail. Pretty cool. Now one of the biggest things, obviously, that stand out on this statue, and it stands out with a lot of Miku statues, is the hair. Look at the hair. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Like, you know, she has ponytails and the, the fact that her ponytails are so long and, and the fact that her hair has so much volume artists and sculptors could do so much crazy things with the hair and this they decided to go with some crazy like two color tassels look at these tassels so they go from the very top of her head right and then you got a nice like reddish orange and then her nice turquoise colored hair and they just like go crazy and what's great about this is that it's not just a smooth curve or a smooth like curl it's they have some jagged edges it's very anime look at this it's like a super sharp jaggedness to the top here and then it goes boom and then it kind of curls and then it's like a lightning bolt that goes down here and then it swirls around it looks chaotic and i love it it is a bit loose though you know you can just kind of do this which you know it, of course they don't want to make it too heavy it'll it'll probably fall and break but like that's crazy look at look at the design it looks like a lightning bolt and a like tsunami kind of put together kind of like it's 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 melding or something it's, it's pretty sick left side of her pigtail does the same thing you know it curls you got some sharp edges and it's so chaotic, like there's no uniform in this, you know? You know, it could have been very even, you know, just opposed to the other side. It could have been just some nice two-way thing, a mirror effect, but no. They didn't go and just like keep the same mold or anything. It's, it's crazy. And then another thing that I noticed is that she has these white tassels, which this doesn't really make sense to me because like the tassels just kind of come off of her her jacket like right here. I don't know what these are. I, they just add an extra flair to the hair, right? I, initially, when I first saw this, I thought the white was also part of her hair because like you know right here you have the turquoise and then you have the the reddish pink or whatever color this is you have these two colors and i thought the white was also part of her hair maybe they're like some tassels that were connected to her pigtails but they're not they're actually connected to her jacket it's a really weird thing going on and i don't understand it but it adds a lot of <laughs> chaos to the ja to, to everything it's, it's really cool and it's also connected right here in the back i noticed just now the white tassels also come here so, you know, pretty cool. And let's also talk about her booty, guys, because we got to talk about that booty, right? It's nothing too crazy, right? Miku's a small, petite, skinny girl, so her ass ain't fat, but, you know, it's there. And what's crazy, you, you see that, like, white shimmer on it, on her butt right now? That's, that's not, that's not my light. That's not my lighting. They added some paints right here. So they added some, like, white or some gray shadowing effects right here to add you know to, to make her butt look bigger this is done on purpose right so they definitely they, they you know the the artists know the sculptors know that people are going to be looking at her butt so they added this extra paint job right here so th you know that white right there in the middle of her, both of her butt cheeks that's not the lighting that is not the white light reflecting off of the statue that is just the paint i really appreciate this piece this piece is really cool and it, it's a lot bigger than i thought for whatever reason i thought it was going to be small i thought it was going to be maybe like a one eighth or a one ninth this is a one seventh piece so it's a it's a pretty pretty large figure for what it is so now we're going to put this lady on her base so the base 
Uh, there's nothing special about it. It's just this clear acrylic uh, base that she's going to stand on. She has holes right here on her shoes. We're just going to be placing this uh, on the base here. Put that one on there. But yeah, here we go. I'm going to hold it up like this. Pretty nice, right? So yeah, like I said earlier in this video, you could probably find this at any anime store uh, statue online. There's a bunch of places to find this. It's not uh, sold out yet. It'll probably be sell selling out soon. So you can find this for about, you know, 240, 250, 260. It's gonna go around for that much. You know, there's so much going on here. I probably missed a couple of details about the statue, but I think for the most part, I think I covered most of it. This is great. You know, I love the design. She looks very hip hop, you know, with the headphones and the skirt. Very stylized, very like Japanese hip hop y looking. So, yeah, I think that's about it for my unboxing video for this uh, Digital Stars. Miku Expo 2020 version of Hatsune Miku. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this Miku statue in the comment section below. And here's a cool thing, you know, because like, you know, I've been collecting higher end Miku statues like this one. Like, if there's a Miku statue that you think I should pick up, let me know. I'll do an unboxing for you guys. I'll let you guys know if it's worth it or not. And yeah, I guess I'll leave it with one more look at the Miku statue and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.